All right, in this example, we're gonna to try to solve an application problem. We are told a culture of bacteria doubles every 40 minutes and has an initial population of 50 bacteria cells. We wanna set up and solve a differential equation to determine the size of the bacteria population five hours after this initial time when we had 50 cells. And these population growth or decay models are one of the earliest applications of differential equations that we see. And the first thing we need to discuss is the differential equation that describes this situation. And so we're gonna to wanna to write down a differential equation like dy over dx for our situation. But let's be very clear about what our variables y and x are representing. So y is representing the number of bacteria and x is then gonna represent time. But we have to be a little bit careful here because we're looking at two different units of time in our problem statement. We're using minutes as our units up here then we're asked to find the population after five hours. Because we're asked to find the population after five hours, uh, maybe let's use the units of hours in constructing our model here. So X is representing time, and that'll be in hours instead of minutes. So it'll be useful to not think of that as 40 minutes anymore, but maybe two thirds of an hour. And what we know is the population of bacteria is gonna grow depending on the size it is currently at. Because our units are a little wonky here, um, and not just in terms of 40 minutes per unit of X, we can't just say that the population is two times the current size of the population. It's some unknown constant K times the current size of our population. So the left-hand side, dy over dx, is describing the instantaneous rate of change of the bacteria population with respect to time and hours. And what it is saying is that this population or this rate of change of population is gonna be proportional to, so that's some constant multiple of, y, which is the current population size. And this makes sense because if we uh, simplify the situation a bit and say every hour the population doubles, we would know that at any moment in time, the rate of change would be, well, two times the current size of the population. But we're not given enough information to figure out what K is right away, but we will be able to figure that out using our initial condition at some point. All right, so now we have our differential equation set up. We also know the initial condition here is that Y of zero is equal to 50, because when X is equal to zero or at this initial time, we have 50 bacteria in the population. What we also know that might be helpful here is that after two thirds of an hour or 40 minutes, the population is gonna double, and that'll give us 100 bacteria in this culture. All right, so now towards solving our differential equation, we're gonna use our method of separation of variables. And we can separate this in a couple different ways, but all those ways are gonna involve us dividing both sides of our differential equation by y whether we let that factor of K go to the Y side or the X side, doesn't really matter. We'll get the same solution in the end. I'm just gonna leave it over on the X side so that there is something there. So going from the original form of our differential equation to our separated form, we divided both sides by Y and multiplied both sides by the differential of X. So now we can integrate both sides, the left-hand side with respect to Y and the right-hand side with respect to x. And for the antiderivative of that left-hand side, we get the natural log of the absolute value of y. And that's gonna be equal to the antiderivative of the constant k with respect to x. And that'll be that constant k times x plus some other constant of integration that we're gonna call c. And now this general solution to our differential equation is written in this implicit form. We can solve this explicitly for y in terms of x just by exponentiating both sides or rewriting this equation from its log form to its exponential form. And that's gonna tell us that y is equal to e to the power of the right-hand side, k times x plus c. And so there is a little bit of funny stuff we're doing here, right? We're dropping this absolute value along the way. And so really this could be plus or minus this exponential, but we, uh, we know the population is always gonna be positive here and Y is describing the population of bacteria, so we want the positive solution to this problem. Furthermore, we could simplify this a little bit further by using some properties of exponents. Write this as e to the power of k times x times e to the power of c, and then recognize, well, e to the power of c is also just gonna be some constant, some positive constant, 
So let's relabel that as C1 to simplify our model. So now our model is going to look like y is equal to e to the power of kx times e to the c, or times c1. So let's just write that in a more standard way. c1 times e to the power of kx. And what we actually just did here is really went through the process of deriving this general exponential growth, or dk model. But now what we still have left to do is find the value of c1 and k corresponding to our initial conditions and the context of this problem. So if we use that first initial condition, y of 0 equals 50, what does that tell us about our model? Well, we know that y is going to be equal to the 50, so we can set the left-hand side equal to 50. And then on the right-hand side, we set x equal to 0, but that'll give us e to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. So that just simplifies very nicely to c1. So now we know our solution actually looks like 50 times e to the power of kx, but we need to figure out what that value of the constant k is. That's going to be related to like the growth rate of our population with respect to our units of hours now. Well, how do we find that k value? We use our other piece of our initial condition. We know that y of 2 thirds is going to be equal to 100. So we can plug that into our equation. y is equal to 100. That's equal to 50 times e to the k times x, but x is 2 thirds. So it'll be 2k over 3. And so now we need to solve this exponential equation for k. The first step towards doing so is to divide both sides by 50. So that gives us 2 is equal to e to the 2k over 3. Then we take the natural log of each side to drop that base. Taking the natural log of each side gives us the natural log of 2 on the left-hand side. And the composition of the natural log of the natural exponential on the right-hand side but that special composition cancels out, leaving us just the exponent of 2 thirds times k. Well, now to finish solving for k, we just multiply both sides by 3 halves, and we see k is equal to 3 halves times the natural log of 2, which is approximately 1.04, according to my notes. All right, so now that we have found the value of our constant C1 and our growth rate K, we can put all that together to construct the solution to our differential equation. So Y is going to be equal to, let's see what was our general form looking like, C1 times E to the power of KX. We found C1 to be 50 and E to the power of KX. We're using that approximate value for K here, about 1.04. So this is the solution to our differential equation, our particular solution. But don't forget the problem is asking us to determine the size of the bacteria population five hours later. So hopefully I have enough room for this. So now to finish this example off, we just have to evaluate our model at time x equals five hours. Remember x we've decided to be in units of hours here. If we did it in minutes, those numbers would change a little bit slightly up in that exponent. So we end up with 50 times e to the power of 1.04 times 5. And according to my notes, that's going to be about 9,064 bacteria. All right, we just rounded to the nearest bacteria here because it doesn't really make sense to have half a bacteria or anything like that. So we finished this example off, we saw a nice little application of this exponential growth and decay model, and we used that solution to predict how many bacteria are going to be in this population.